Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Today's video features a recent session I had at Bangor Trout Fishery, first time I've been there and beautiful little place. It turned out to be a really tough day fishing with not many people being successful um, and there's a lot of changes and varying tactics throughout the day to try and hit some fish so I thought I'd just share this to demonstrate the thought process that I go through on days like this and to share some of the tactics I use and the reasoning behind that. So it's worth pointing out that obviously tactics will vary depending on conditions but I'll just cover what I did on this day and I can share future videos to cover different conditions. Reading up on the fishery beforehand there was quite a few rules so always worth doing that before you visit somewhere. So totally barbless at this fishery and quite a few other rules, minimum leader strength and not allowed to use boobies or static lures. Like most places it's been highly pressured since lockdown was lifted so it was a case of having a look at the water when it turned up and looking at conditions and deciding what I wanted to do. So, looking it was pretty flat calm and whenever it's like this I always fish light, so talking five weight lines, so I went the five weight floating line, um, no point in using a seven weight or anything like that in these conditions, five weight lines plenty and just means you're causing less disturbance on the water and it's actually quite fun. Looking at the water itself, it was absolutely gin clear. So my normal behaviour would be go for a thinner leader diameter. Now, one of the rules of this fishery was a minimum breaking strain of six pound. So that was my choice, basically. So one win the six pound leader. And yeah, it was going to be tough to tempt some fish, potentially. But I was looking forward to it. Next thing I was thinking about where to go, so I was having to think about which areas and thinking about the depth, it was quite bright, so I wanted to choose a peg where I'd have options to fish different levels. I could see a couple of pegs that looked good, but obviously it depends. The fishery opened and everybody charged to a peg, so thankfully I managed to get a peg that I had the dam wall on the right and a shallow weed bed to the left, so that was ideal. So that's where I started off and ended up staying there for quite some time. Next it was time to think about what method I wanted to use, so looking for signs when you arrive, um, any fish moving on the surface, things like that, see how high they're in the water, but also ask the fishery staff, they're the ones that know, um, and the word was they're quite high in the water, so that was good. So started off in the washing line, first of all, and as you can see it was absolutely calm. Usual setup for washing line, so I tend to go five, five and five and a half feet. And the flies that I was fishing was brown UV cruncher, olive cruncher and a fab based on the fact you couldn't use a booby. So that was on the five weight floating line and fished on that for quite some time. Um, could see some fish moving, could, the water was that clear, you could see some fish cruising about. But yeah, it was really tricky to try and tempt them. So it was time to start thinking, what else can I do? Um, I got that feeling early on that these fish were wise and being highly pressured so it was a case of thinking what do I do next to try and increase my chances. So what I did was I looked at changing the flies so when I say changing flies for this it was actually reducing the size of the flies. Now obviously I was a bit limited with the six pound leader that I couldn't go down very tiny or you wouldn't get a good presentation on very small flies but going down to size 14s um, just a little bit smaller and hope, hoping that that would tempt some fish. Obviously you change colours, you can change different patterns, hairs, ear, that kind of thing, more natural looking. Um, but yeah, scaled down the size of the flies and tried that for a while but again, wasn't tempting anything so it was time to think. I tried out the washing line at that level so it was maybe st time to start thinking about changing the depth. So I did that and changed over to the midge tip line and actually eventually went on to the intermediate line, so using a die 3. I wasn't convinced they were that deep, but I wasn't tempting them any other method. I switched over to die 3 and just to see if there was any fish holding deep. There was just I could only see a few fish cruising, but um, yeah, they were higher up in the water. Um, but yeah, it was always worth a try and always something I'll do is change your levels. If you're not seeing constant fish, then yeah, worth doing. So this was me on the midge tip line and as I got to the end of this retrieve, I actually got a pull, um, so it was nice to actually feel a fish. Didn't hook it, but seen a fish, felt a fish, and 
knew they were there. So they were taking the smaller, flat, more natural flies, but yeah, after that I went completely dead. So you may actually see here just about coming right in and about to lift up, pull off. So next thing was to think about moving, but um, unfortunately it was so busy that most of the pegs were taken up. Normally I'd be moving around just to see if there's more fish holding in an area or just, just to change the scenery and cover a different area of water. So that wasn't an option, but to be honest, I was quite happy where I was. I knew it was good areas and I couldn't see anyone else catching fish. So it was one of those days you just knew it was going to be tricky. So my next port of call was thinking about fishing static. Um, a lot of the time that can really tempt fish to take something or maybe a bit used to seeing something pulled across in front of them just leave something static then they can take it now i was fishing here with a bung fly with two flies suspended underneath um so two buzzers not allowed to fish static lures so just fishing with a buzzer two feet under the surface and one at six feet under the surface and did that for a while changed about but again Nothing was taken and didn't feel that that method was going to be successful. The wind kept picking up as well, which didn't help matters. So next it was thinking, well, try and play to the regression. Everything slow or static didn't seem to be too interested in, so it was time to throw on some lures. So on went on the slow and immediate, spacing seven and a half and eight feet with two lures. Um, started off with actually a cormorant on the dropper and a blue flash damsel, but more of a lure type damsel. And so gave that a go, um, again just working through, starting off on the midge tip line and down to intermediate lines and again nothing doing. So switched off to just one lure, um, went a bit bigger so I used a black leech. Um, this pattern always seems to get me fish but again tried that for quite some time and fish weren't willing to chase it which this, this time of year, summer, lures are less effective, but always usually pick you up one or two fish, but again, it was um, just not happening. And after the day's fishing, it seemed not many people caught subsurface at all. So, bit of a frustrating start, but then it was a case of adjusting to what I see and always have a look about, ask people if you see someone catching a fish, and most people are more than willing to share it with you, so... I started to see more action on the surface, um, so you see there a fish rising just to my right and I was starting to think well one of the few things I've tr not tried is dry fly so on the dry fly so I started off with two dry flies spaced six feet apart although the fish weren't free rising it was still worth a worth a go see if I could tempt them up so on went the trusty old olive clink hammers um, size 14s Nice and delicate and thought, start with that and see how I get on. Um, so, be beautiful calm conditions on the dry fly and yeah, just hoping to start getting action soon. Um, as you can see there, I just missed one um, and that seemed to be the theme. So, there was fish showing an interest, but more swirling or just trying to drown the fly it seemed. So, I thought, what can I do next? So, I thought maybe improve the presentation. Um, so... I switched over to just using the one dry fly to try and keep the presentation as good as possible. I'm um, on a long leader of 15 feet and just having that one dry fly sitting nicely on the surface, sometimes that can make a difference. Um, switched over to use a grunter olive, which never fails to catch me fish. It's a great little fly in a size 12 I was using here. Um, so gave that a bash. Thought hopefully having that one fly there could tempt something up to take it. Um, and again, I had some interest. There were fish coming up, having a look. Nothing was taking it very confidently. Um, again, there, just missed that fish. I'm not convinced it tried to take it. So, next port of call was do something different. Now, normally by the time you've tried all those tactics, you'll more often than not have gotten to fish, especially changing depths. I mean, usually the washing line's a solid technique, and if you change depth, you'll you'll come into fish when you find where they're feeding at. But today it just wasn't happening, so I thought I'll just try something different, which can be using a fly you don't normally use, something like that. Um, so what I went with was a massive mayfly. Now, my thought, be, my thought here was 
they're not taking the little flies, so basically put a pie on the surface of the water for them. See if I can just attempt one aggressively to take it, and as you can see, almost five minutes after I put the massive mayfly on, a fish hammered it, and this was me into my first fish of the day after going through all those different techniques. And it was a great feeling. Sometimes I think you get more out of catching a fish once you've tried everything um, rather than just hitting them one, one, one cast after the other. So I was delighted to be into my first fish um, after all that time and effort trying. I then changed over to a slightly more subtle CDC mayfly. It's kind of lower pro profile, but still pretty big. Um, to give that a bash and again, into a fish. So, seemed to have found a method and it was one dry fly presented really well. And in this case, a large dry fly. It seemed to be tempting the fish up to hammer it rather than subtle takes on smaller flies. Now, it's not normal, but yeah. It just shows you it pays sometimes to try something different. It tends to be the other way around, that bigger flies they'll try and drown and you go smaller and catch fish, but it's just one of those days where something different worked, so always worth just trying something left field, whether it be bigger flies or even flies you don't use as often or think, yeah, you've gone off using, or variants of a fly that you like but in different colours, so like a yellow dancer, but changing up the colours or something like that. Definitely pays to do once in a while when, you, when you've tried everything and you really aren't having much success. That was my day done and I had a really enjoyable day. I mean, it was difficult, but I do like having those days now and again where you really feel rewarded when you, you've tried a lot of different things and you eventually work out something that the fish want. And yeah, a bit crazy today, but I found something they wanted and managed to catch three fish when a lot of people were struggling to catch one. So enjoyed my day and I'll definitely like to go back to Bangor really beautiful place. I'd 
really recommend it to people. It's just a beautiful little peaceful spot. Um, so yeah, I look forward to going back when conditions aren't quite so difficult and the fish haven't been pressured as much. As I said before, normally the depth is key and you'll find the majority of the time it's just working out the depth the fish are feeding at. But a day like today, they were, they were high in the water but just couldn't tempt them. So yeah, came down to using a massive mayfly, which is rather funny. So one last tip before I leave you is check your reel. So if you have your spare rod lying down and then pick it up to use it, it's always worth checking your reel. Um, reasons being you just don't know what's lurking in there. So I found this little guy as I was about to strip line out and I'm pretty glad I noticed to be honest because I could have damaged him. Um, so it's this, these wee moments in fishing which I love. It's these wee interactions with nature. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.